Hey everybody, how's it going? Are you doing good? Are you doing good? I hope you're doing good. Welcome to our second Amplify stream, where we take the time to shut the f up and give the platform away to people who sometimes don't get a big enough voice. And today we're celebrating LGBTQIA plus uh, developers. I hope you guys are excited, because I am. There's a couple of really neat games. We're actually going to talk about a, a board game today. Uh, and we're also going to talk about kind of like a visual novel, romancy kind of thing called uh, Heart of the Woods by Studio Elan. And uh, I'll be bringing the devs in. So as you remember from my last um, Amplify stream, uh, you may just have to bear with me as I unf*** everything technically. Jesslyn, 413 with a 10 month sub. Woo! All of the uh, tip subs, you know, usually when we do the Amplify stream, we donate it. We're gonna donate it to uh, uh, some kind of LGBT friendly cause. I don't know what that is yet, um, but it will go there, I promise you. I'll announce it when it when it happens. Uh, so what's up, Kay Foster and S. Sabro, Kichi and Earthbound Jedi, Zeo Corvid. Zeo Corvid designed a new emote for us, which is in the chat, I believe right now. Uh, it's this one. Some Ikar love from the D&D stream. Thank you so much, Zio, for donating that emo to us. It looks amazing. You're awesome. What's up, Soft Guitar, Tish Tish? SD Teen Wolf, Danielle, and Al Moore, and Zeon Memories, and Azure Lady Sakajawaka, and Unaram. Level one hype train, we're about to hit level two. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, Sunday was an incredible D&D &D stream. We had such a good time. It was so good. Ah! I've really fallen in love with D&D with &D in general. This is like my first kind of serious campaign, I guess. I can't believe we didn't die either. That boss fight was ridiculous. By all rights, we should have died so many times. So many times, like TPKs should be happening. I don't know how we didn't die either. As I'm talking to you guys, I'm gonna start kind of setting up uh, what's going on with the, the devs. And I'm gonna add in, so, let's see, let's see here. And this. Oh, it looks like they didn't accept my friend request. Maybe they hate me enough already. Do they hate me? Let's see. Hmm. Okay, so Josh is gonna take care of it. Uh, is doing some mic checks. Well, they're not they're not scheduled for. Okay, no video, so it's gonna be all chat. You're gonna just see my stupid face and the game, uh, and I'll I'll make my face really small. Uh, great. That's so much. E I love seeing devs' faces. I love seeing people's faces. It's just it's way easier when they just call in. But I would much I would much rather their faces be on if they want to be. In this case, it's gonna be no video, it's gonna be audio only. Just us and Studio Elon. Elon. So while they're getting ready, I can talk to you guys about other stuff. Um, so what's going on this week? We got Shadowverse tomorrow, we got Just Cause on Thursday, but on Thursday, on Thursday, you guys, I'm about to make, I'm gonna drop some announcements on you for what's going on at the end of the month for Fire Emblem stuff. There's gonna be some great stuff. So I'm gonna actually, I was gonna push a video on Thursday. I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna save it for this stream, for the Thursday stream. So we'll open up and I'll play the video that I already made, kind of announcing all the cool stuff. And since I made the video, I've gotten some more details on some of the events that I know you guys are gonna be excited about. I know you are. I'm 100% positive you're gonna be really excited about what's going on for Foya Emblem. For Foya Emblem? Um, and that'll be cool. And then I'll never talk about Claude again, I promise. After the first, after the first anniversary, I will never talk about Claude again. 
Don't worry about it. We'll move on. Okay? Everyone's like, what the f I'm definitely, I I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to have a guest. We're in the middle of a pandemic. No one will be here with me. Um, but I think you guys are going to be excited. I think you guys are going to be excited. Get for her grandmother. It's 11 months. Get wrecked by grandmother. I feel wrecked by your 11 months. We're going to hit the 12 month. We're going to, wow, we're going to hit it. The, wow, Baku gone. Baku, get out of here with the gift subs. Thank you so much. Sakajiwaka wants my fail not. No, you can't have it. I'm keeping that forever. It's going to remain on that wall over there forever and ever and ever and ever. Oh, Michelle hit, did Michelle hit 12 months? Wow. Is Faye, did Faye Mata pogs for the anniversary? That's amazing. I love them. I think it's funny that all the alerts are weird for this particular stream. I think it's because of the, I think I'm tapping into the wrong server for the alerts, but I like them. I'm getting new custom alerts made. I'm really excited. They should be done by the time uh, some of our Fire Emblem events. Well, one of them should be done by the time our Fire Emblem events kick off, which I'm really excited about. Can someone explain who Claude is? No. No. So I'm excited for this week. I think it's going to be a fun a fun week. What are you guys doing this week? Wow, we're at like level 2 hype train. Is that is that hype train level 3? Oh my gosh. Thank you guys. A fail not gun. What would that look like? K Foster fear the deer. Harmonious notes, do your homework. I've collected all the level one emotes. I don't know what that means. But uh yeah. Sweet. Alex uh, and one of my new video editors, Connor, have been hard at work editing some new sketches for you guys. Um I'm excited. I really enjoy producing sketch content. If you haven't seen that the last one that I did uh was all about Wearing, acting with a face mask. <clears throat> if you haven't seen it yet, you should check it out. I'm a YouTube. Uh, also, there's, um, what else is on there that just came up? It was a couple in a row. I did a sketch about the stuntman, and then, and then it was, oh, the Q&A one. The bringing the con back to you Q&A kind of thing. I chin chan scallop potatoes sound amazing. Yeah, the Q&A video went up. I'm glad you guys, I'm glad you guys like them. I have another one coming out that I think you'll enjoy. And then, uh, I don't know, I gotta, I gotta have some new ideas. This is cool music. What am I listening to? This is... Schnabubula. If you're not familiar with Schnabubula, uh, Samuel Asherweiss, I think is his full name. Schnabubula is one of the most talented video game remixing piano players I've ever seen in my life. He has, uh, uh, just some of the best stuff. I listen to his stuff whenever I feel down and it makes me feel good. Schnububula, schnububula, schnububula. Uh, it is spelled uh, S or it's, it's S-H-N-A-B-U-B-U-L-A Right there. Call of White Fang coming in with a 10 months. Awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, the one year gang, man. Did you guys get a cool badge when you come in, came into one year? I thought we made one. Maybe I didn't. I've been really behind on a lot of like the little like rando stuff in Twitch. I'm sorry. Not yet. I thought we, I thought we did. Maybe I didn't put it up because I'm an idiot. I have to look. I'm gonna look right now. I don't want to watch my own stream. Pause that. Let me look. Okay, let's see what it is. Lots of Schmo anniversaries today. Let's see. Let's see. This is the... Where is the thing? Twitch is like... Navigation menus... Are in general... Not 
friendly. Loyalty badges. Oh my gosh, I don't even have a nine month. Why the f are you guys still here? That's for Donka Donk. I'm an awful person. No, we gotta we gotta fix this. Uh, mods, if you'd remind me to fix this, I will fix it. All right, guys, it looks like uh, Studio Elan is ready. I'm gonna go off mic for a second, and then I'm gonna talk to them, and I will be right back. Give me a second. Okay. Hi, everybody. I am here with Josh, Rachel, and Minute from Studio Elan. Can you hear me still? Or did I screw it up? Can hear you fine, yeah. Great. Can you guys, yes. can you in the audience hear them? Is the real, is the real question. Hello, audience. Hello. Thank you for having us. Hi. <laughs> Excellent. They can hear you. Okay, cool. Okay. Cool. So uh, while I'm opening Heart of the Woods, this has actually just been sitting here thanking me for downloading Heart of the Woods for quite a while. <laughs> Uh, with the ballerina, which is super cool. Um, tell me a little bit about who you guys are and, and your studio and the game. Right. So uh, my name is Josh. I am the founder of Studio Elan. Uh, we started back in early 2017. Um, I was the director for Heart of the Woods, as well as the lead writer for it, and kind of doing those things for some of our upcoming games as well. Cool. And Rachel, um, yeah, Rachel, a minute. Who, who, what, what's your role in the studio? Okay, um, my name is Rachel. I was the co-author on Heart of the Woods cool. uh, with Josh, and I am currently writing slash directing uh, one of our upcoming projects, Lock and Key. So Did that's what I've been Lock up and to. Key? Lock and Key. Okay, yes. cool. And I'm Minute. Um, I did the programming and visual directing for Heart of the Woods. I'm programming all of our upcoming titles. I'm doing the art and writing, uh, co-writing in Summer of the Summer at the Edge of the Universe, and um, I try to just help out around, do all the little things. <laughs> it's awesome. Minute does a little bit of everything. How yeah. how big is the studio? How many people are are, are in your in your crew? So we have something like eight or nine people, I think, mm -hmm. who are kind of like permanent members of the studio. That's us, um, a couple other writers, a musician, our PR team. Uh, and then we work with a number of different artists and like character artists, background artists, sometimes uh, other musicians for our projects. And so on any given title, we've got probably something like uh, 12 to 13 people working on it. That's cool. And you have how many titles released now? Four or five? Uh, only two out so far. But you have um, some upcoming. Yes, we've, we've got a bunch in the pipeline. Uh, Heart of the Woods came out in February of last year, mm -hmm. and that was the first game that we did under the name Studio Elan. And then we also have a game called Highway Blossoms, which came out a couple years ago. Uh, but that was originally done like under a different studio name and stuff. So that's, okay. that's our, our first or our second title, depending how you look at it. Okay. I think it counts. It all counts. <laughs> cool. So what I have pulled up here is Heart of the Woods. Tell me a little bit about like the genesis of this game. I have to configure accessibility settings. Also, someone, <laughs> someone, uh, something Scorpion, I missed it, said that, uh, oh, where did it go? 
was just complimenting your your, your new upcoming game and it looked amazing but oh, oh, i can't, thank you so I can't much. see their name anymore. are you guys <laughs> watching the chat or would you like me to call out stuff when i uh i've got the chat open. okay now. cool yeah uh, so, Heart of the Woods started um, pretty shortly after Highway Blossoms came out in 2016, actually. Um, Rachel was the first person um, who kind of joined the party. Uh, originally, it was just me at the start, um, putting together a new team for this new game. And over the next year and a half or so, uh, we kind of snowballed, fittingly, for the, for the setting. Um, nice. Picking up more members, picking up, uh, you know, kind of expanding like the number of people working on it. So for instance, we, we ended up working with the musician in love with the ghost for our ending theme, um, which was like a really cool. Experience. That's the musician's handle is in love with the ghost. In love with the ghost. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was kind of like a two year process. Um, and then, yeah, we, we released it in 2019 originally. Uh, and then just three days ago, actually, uh, two or three days ago, we released a patch for the game, which adds full English voice acting for the, for the whole game. Amazing. So, yeah, yeah, it's been super cool. Was that your um, first uh, foray into casting and directing and, and, all, and all that of voice acting? It's actually the second time mm -hmm. uh, Highway Blossoms has voice acting as well. It was kind of the same thing where we released a game without voice acting at first and then added it in as a, an update um, a while later. But yeah, it, it's definitely something that we we are still kind of new to since, like I said, this is a kind of a new team compared to who worked on Highway Blossoms originally. So for a lot of us, it was the first time getting into voice acting. How, uh, how was the experience? I mean, I, I don't know if you like, you know, I, I just kind of reached out and randomly pitched you guys. You know, I'm a voice actor, right? Like, that's what I do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, mid, we're we're kind of a big Fire Emblem fan. Oh, great. So, yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Okay, neat. Um, so, you, you, know, the, you know that I'm in the industry. How, how, how was that? Uh, how was that experience for you? Uh, it was really cool. Um, Rachel, what do you think? It was kind of like your first time since I'd been through mm -hmm. the Highway Blossoms process before. Oh yeah, it was um, it was wild. I think just the experience of seeing something that I wrote like read out by the <laughs> professional was so it uh it uh, it still doesn't quite feel real. I I don't know how people how people keep their cool with that sort of thing. But it was great working with a really really talented cast and fine tuning stuff with them to make sure that it captured the the full emotion of it and i thought it was really really special and i hope i get to do it again at some point <laughs> that's awesome and you found a, it, it it enhanced your uh like was has the have the fans been re receptive oh yeah the fans have been great um we've had a lot of really positive feedback to to the voice patch so great. far and it's also i personally feel like it really really added a lot to the game beyond just the voices uh so to speak mm -hmm. because so like for our main character maddie um at the start of the game she's kind of at odds with her best friend tara and so we we see her being kind of grumpy and not in a very good mood a lot of the time mm -hmm. and she definitely comes off as a little bit abrasive uh but with the voice acting ali goodell her voice actress makes her a lot more humanized and likable and so I, I think in that regard, it really it really makes the game better than it was uh, unvoiced. That's cool. Yeah, I guess voices can add a little bit of nuance. That that's that's the reason we get in trouble when we when we text our significant others, right? Because you can't because <laughs> you can't read the context. Yeah, exactly. That's not how I. That's not, well. That wasn't the tone I was trying to use. Yeah. So yeah, I totally <laughs> I totally get that. Now the question is, did did I download the voiced version? Did it automatically um, update? Because I downloaded it several days ago. Uh, did you get it on Steam? Yes. Okay, then you should automatically get the update, I think. Okay, cool. You can always check in the options. Um, there will be a tab for sound, and uh, the voices will be right there. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, if you got the new version, there will be, be settings for the voices. Let me take a look in the options, because I just loaded up the menu. Oh, there is a little thing for voices. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Yeah, you've got the new version then. Great. I love the access, like you had really considerate accessibility settings at the beginning, like shake and stuff like that. I know, uh, actually, uh, Greg Greg Chun, if you're familiar with him, he's another voice actor. He has a lot of trouble playing uh, games that have a lot of uh, funny motion like that. So mm -hmm. I'm sure he would appreciate something like that. That's cool. Let's start this yeah. up. 
Yeah, um, me and Addie worked really hard on that. Uh, she did a lot of research in, Addie was our GUI designer, and she did a lot of research into accessibility options, and we tried to include as many as we could. That's to awesome. Make it enjoyable mm -hmm. for everyone. It's actually pretty cool because uh, the the creators of the game engine that we use, RenPy, uh, the developer actually went on and added some accessibility options to the to the engine by default, um, which is really cool now. So, yeah, we're really happy about that. So, is this a, is this like a paranormal? Not a paranormal romance, but is it like about paranormal activity? Like, are they going ghost hunting? I'm only reading yes. this. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so it's kind of a kind of a supernatural um, fantasy sort of thing. Okay. I often say that our studio is not so much focused on romance games with fantasy, but we do like fantasy stories with romance in them. Okay. And so, yeah, I think Heart of the Woods is really a, a, a quintessential example of that. We um we're really inspired when developing the story and developing kind of the visual identity of the game um, by two things in particular. One being fairy tales uh -huh. and, you know, the kind of like the magic behind fairy tales and the, the stories and the morals. And then also we, we kind of use Disney movies as like a moral compass almost. We were like, okay, we don't want to get too dark with the story. Sure. Our, our, our guideline is kind of, if it could happen in a Disney movie, we can do it here, but we don't want to, we don't want to go too far in the, in the horror direction or anything like that the uh the art is really amazing like just oh right yeah. away it's uh it's really really cool we just got like our first our first little glimpse of them sitting on the train mm -hmm. yeah the character artist uh for this game was rosuri um and she is an amazing illustrator uh she, she's been one of my favorite artists for pretty much my whole life, and so getting to work with her on these games was quite literally a, a dream come true. And That's cool. Yeah, she's she's incredible. The uh, the music ain't bad either. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, just everyone that we get to work with is immensely skilled, um, and yeah, we're we're really really happy with how Heart of the Woods turned out. Really really proud. Yeah, it's cool. It was um it was really really amazing to have that as a as a game industry debut. It's actually the first game I've ever worked on. Nice. And having it turn out as beautifully as it did, and being able to work with as many super super talented people as as we all did it was I couldn't have asked for a better start. Yeah, this <laughs> uh this already really does not feel like a rando eight person shop. <laughs> Like this, this is this looks like a real polished game, guys. Oh, thank you this so much. So cool. Yeah. Thank you. With um with this scene in particular, we really had like a certain kind of mood that we wanted to convey. Like yeah. we we took a lot of care with like exactly how the music should sound for this uh, scene, what the art should be like, what the characters should be talking about. Like this was the first scene written for the game, and it was absolutely a blueprint for for everything else that came after. Very cool. I shouldn't be hearing voice right now, right? No, not yet. Okay. All the all the dialogue will be voiced, uh, but not inner, just inner... Likes to talk to herself a lot. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Once once she gets this uh, her internal monologue out of the way, that's when we start hearing okay. the voice acting. <laughs> and you wrote this, Josh? You said? Uh, Rachel and I wrote it together. Okay. Yeah, this particular scene I wrote. Um, but overall, it was pretty close to an even split um, of writing between the two of us. Uh, I did more of the writing focused on Maddie and one of the other characters will meet Abby. Okay. Whereas Rachel did a lot of the writing for Tara, who's kind of off screen right now to the left, as well as Morgan, who, who hasn't shown up in the game yet. Um, and then we, we still, like, both of us wrote for, you know, every character a little bit. But that right. was the main kind of breakdown. It's awesome. Hey, uh, I think it was really cool that we were able to break it up that way, just because, you know, we, we worked as hard as we could to get some real consistency, consistency between our writing, but it, uh, it fits really well to have two very distinct styles for two different romances, just to, to help the whole thing feel extra fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the other things that I think really 
like brings the brings it to life um which is not as much in this scene because we have the the still kind of um uh, images like this, but once you get to the to the character sprites and whatnot, um, Minute did a lot of work with the with like the character sprite animations and movements across the screen. Right. Um, just in terms of like screen real estate, I guess. And so she can maybe tell you a little bit more about how, like, the process of adapting, you know, what Rachel and I write to how to convey that sort of stuff on screen with the characters. Sure. Yeah. I there's a a unique challenges with I think visual novel writing. Now I've never I've written novels. I've never written visual novels oh, or cool. graphic novels. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a really interesting like trying to figure out okay what static image is going to represent this large story arc. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. um yeah. Go ahead. Um, I took a lot of inspiration mostly from uh, other visual novels, of course. And which ones um, in particular? Uh, Fate Stay Night is cool. pretty much the one I always cite since it's just so um, big. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually wasn't part of the Highway Blossoms uh, original team, but I played <clears> it just to see how they did it too. And um, uh, overall, I think that for me, when I direct, I like to try to make things kind of cinematic. Um, you can really tell in the later parts of the story when I was getting more comfortable with the engine and everything mm -hmm. that... Um, I think keeping hey, the camera moving and changing the expressions as much as you can and um, even little things like adding a vignette to the screen when a character's monologuing really helped to keep things fresh because uh, cool. when things are too static, I think people kind of zone out of what they're looking at. Yeah, for sure. Oh, how close is almost? I turn up I, Go ahead. Oh, I was going say, I think that... Um... The, this whole game was very much a learning process for every single one of us. I don't know. Uh, there Couple were minutes. there were multiple people on the team actually who hadn't worked in okay. games before or worked in visual I'm novels before, up. and while that was kind of a like I said, it was a learning process for for all of us. Sure. But I think it also I mean it. helped to kind of make it special, stop. bringing a lot to... of these like outside perspectives um from people who might not I'm be used Matt. to visual novels or to uh you know what to expect from them mm -hmm. and so kind of approaching development with a with a blank slate in that regard i think is really something that worked out nicely for us too okay yeah and i just saw that like the first little kind of movements as we go through the dialogue they mm -hmm. change their position yeah. even within the static which is cool it's neat mm -hmm. yeah I'm excited a uh, little bit it was a lot of fun for me to um, program this because I actually went into this mostly as a writer. Um, uh -huh. I've done some work in RepBy before, but um, I would usually just write the stories and then also about. as an artist to... We've done this a thousand um, times. Josh and I worked really closely to ask for more expressions um, from the yeah, artist Rosary to see what uh -huh. would, would like, like, get times. the most bang for our buck, really. Like, you know, what you eye know expression that. can we reuse the most? What kind of... Um, pose will uh, have a lot of use. I don't know, Maddie. I'm sorry. Let's chill. Yeah. Sorry. I'm I'm looking at like it's kind of awesome for me. I have no real art aesthetic sense <laughs> at all. So like I I can't even like be like if someone asked me that question, I'd be like I I don't know. <laughs> So they're heading off to hunt for ghosts, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. They yeah. are they they've just come from overseas to uh, very vaguely fantasy Germany. Um, okay. We kind of kind of took some inspiration from Bavaria and then a okay, lot cool. of, of inspiration from uh, other media. But yeah, they're they're there life, heading to a village called Eisenfeld um, after receiving an invitation from one of the locals there who claims that uh she has she has really interesting information so so to give a bit of background real quick tara the red-haired well, character on the screen sure, yeah. here okay. is a star let's of a, a fictional uh a youtube time. channel called terra normal uh, i love it she does yeah thank you <laughs> where she does like ghost investigations and stuff like that and it's so far it's all been total busts but it's been enough for them to build a reputation uh maddie's her video editor okay cool and so 
right before this game starts, uh, Maddie's kind of given Tara the news that this is going to be the last video, that she's she's leaving the show to focus on her own future after this. Okay. And so that's why yeah, things yeah, are a okay. little bit Sorry for tense here at the beginning Locked between two of them. Maddie yeah. doesn't know this yet, right? Uh, they they do know, Amelia. but it's it's very hey, recent. Like they I just look? found out oh, okay. within the last couple days that Maddie's going to be leaving, and so yeah, it's it's still a fresh wound between them. Cool. Well, like Greg Greg Chun, we summoned him. He stopped by. He's in the chat right now. Oh hi, Greg. <laughs> he's, hey, Greg. he's already complimented the great music. <laughs> Thank you. Greg is a composer himself. If you didn't know. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, we we work with two composers for this game. Uh, the track you're hearing right now is by Sarah Mancuso, and then we also had um, some tracks by the composer Astrotus, and yeah, they're just, they're both phenomenal musicians. Cool. Fisher, Morgan Fisher. If she's meeting her online hero or whatever, then I doubt she'll care that your hair's a mess. God, I hope not. I don't want to end up on some fashion faux pas vid. For real though, if she's super fangirly, then let's just let her get it out of her system. Appreciate your uh, your very hardcore gameplay later. here. You know, I'm pretty impressed with your mechanics. Uh, yeah, you know what? This is <laughs> this is what I call a pro gamer move. What I'm doing yeah, right now. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, true. You know, most most first timers aren't quite this good, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I've you know I've been I've been gaming for a long time. Oh right, right. <laughs> Comes with the territory. So you said you've written a couple novels yourself. I have, uh, yeah. I, I've written some uh, sort of like comedy, military science fiction comedy. They were published with... Oh, cool. Yeah, published by Simon & Schuster over the last couple of years. But I'm not That's writing awesome. anything right now. Right. You really do it all, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> Matt, jack of all trades, and then there's the rest right, of that sentence. Right. Except art, apparently. Except, all, except art, dancing, and talking about my feelings. <laughs> That's... <laughs> You know, those are those are difficult things. Yeah, you that's can, rough. You can all relate to that, I'm sure. That's rough. I feel like you could say the same thing about Maddie, so you're in good company. Great, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, especially when it comes to dancing. Oh, this is pretty. Yeah, I see. I used to live in Germany, so I see. Like, I I see the Bavaria. This is making me. You even got like the timber frame on the houses and stuff like that. That's neat. Oh yeah, yeah. We uh we had some like photo references from from like uh that part of germany as well as switzerland um just that whole sort of area uh, so we we definitely wanted to capture that that kind of mystical european aesthetic that's cool i i loved bavaria i actually i lived on the west side of germany so it wasn't quite as uh oh that's awesome i mean it was very pretty but it's it's not so quintessential lederhosen oh, right you know? yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it was very cold oh i'm sure <laughs> Okay, this place is already killing it in terms of This atmosphere. one was mine, right? Yeah, this was this was a scene that Rachel wrote. Okay. Um, and then we kind of passed it back and forth and did a little bit of editing. But yeah, this is this was Rachel's scene. Well, I certainly don't notice a difference in style, so nice job making oh, that's it good. <laughs> making it uh, continuous. Cool, cool. I can't imagine like co-writing something. <laughs> It's uh, it's definitely an acquired skill. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we we had like an outline that we all worked on together at the start and figured out more or less from beginning to end mm -hmm. like how the story would go. A lot of the the in between stuff changed, but we had the major parts figured out. And then uh, we we broke it down and kind of Rachel and I assigned scenes. Um, so like I would write this scene, Rachel write the next one. I would write this scene, Rachel write the next one. And we basically did that for the whole game. So we were collaborating really closely through the entire writing process. And then during editing, um, that was one of the main objectives is to, you know, make sure that everything sounds relatively consistent. Yeah. Um, and that it feels you like, a, like a cohesive package. Visible, right? Now, are you guys co-located or I mean, I'm at, not during pandemic times, but I'm saying, do you work physically together or you work all over the place? We're, we're all really over the place, yeah. The cool. three of us are here in the Listen. U.S., but we have members in uh, New Zealand, in the Philippines uh all over the world that's awesome it's really fun trying to get a team meeting together whenever <laughs> different time zones. i'm sure it yeah. is we but never all... keep track of those time zones either <laughs> i bet you yeah. reap the benefits in like a bunch of different cultural perspectives though too yeah yeah one of our um upcoming games please be happy uh is actually set in a fantasy version of it's wellington so new zealand isn't and the director cool? for that game, Adarosa, who as I anymore. mentioned, is our, our GUI designer for Heart of the Woods. Oh, cool. Uh, she's she's actually from that area. And so 
it, it's a really like local kind of personal thing for her. Um, for real though, so I yeah, think I, I think that definitely shows in evidence. the writing for Please Something Be Happy solid. so far as well. I love that title. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Just look at it. We, uh, we just recently announced that game, actually, um, last week or the week before. Yeah. You know, they, all the days kind of blend together now. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that one's coming. That'll actually be our next release title, too. Uh, please, please be happy. For later this year. Yes. Yes. We're aiming for a 2020 release. Nice. Well, now's yeah. the time to consume visual novels, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll post it's a great time for games. Again. Exactly. Well, moderator, eat my... Oh, Okay. Let me see you discovered. Did they eat yeah, your link? Been working on... Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll post the link here. Yeah, I'll I'll, tra I'll transfer it over. Do, do, do. So what I'm posting is your uh, please be happy. Uh, yeah, Sounds... that's that's the one we just announced. Okay, I just dropped it in in chat. You Thank guys. you. We've been working be on that one for off, close to you? two years by now, I think. Mm -hmm. and so it's really exciting to <laughs> announce it and you know to let everyone see Addy's hard work and that's cool the, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna click on it the artist too we have a, a kind of a, a funny trend so far where most of the games that we work on uh what they end up being is a very yeah. different the game than what we set out to make at the beginning uh yeah so for with heart of the woods for instance the first idea that we were working on was this kind of like maddie was going to be a barista at a coffee house uh -huh. and it was going to be more about like time travel and kind of science fictiony and there was none of this fantasy stuff outside of the outside this is of for like travel. the original concept of heart of the woods <laughs> yes okay and rachel and i were working on that and we just kept running into plot holes um which has forever turned me off of writing time travel plots i've decided uh, they're, they're just way too they're too complicated uh, for me to i will never write a time travel book and if it, i did yeah one of the one of the great things about writing comedy is you can is. you can ignore pretty much everything right so like that's why like yeah. when i'm writing in i wrote in space and there's faster than like travel and i just called it unspace and i left it at that right. like i didn't i never exactly. explained it it's just that's you know sometimes you can get away with it it's funnier if it doesn't if it's not explained a lot that of the time, I think. Time. Yeah. And their panel yeah. Out, uh, so we we decided no time travel for us. Great. And we we reapproached everything, and we eventually settled on um, you know what you see now this this fantasy kind of winter wonderland um, setting. Yeah. And then we had a kind of we had a similar experience with Please Be Happy, where originally it was going to be this darker, kind of grittier um, like urban fantasy set in like a victorian or gothic kind of location yeah and that that did a total 180 um to to what you see now but even then we have the same characters well, that we came up with tomorrow. for this premise we reworked them like uh to fit into the new the new concept like and so they've they've survived the the update even if the plot in the setting didn't yeah yeah it's it's great. It's like making an AU for your own characters. Oh uh, yeah. Go <laughs> ahead of time. How they'll function. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All rustic <clears throat> and old timey. I, I do still I want to go with one ride. of the ideas from the time travel plot someday, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say. <laughs> yeah, you can. You just put it in the bucket and you. Yeah. What is it? We were going to we were going to use this really fun idea involving a, a time traveling desk drawer, like. Be you put a letter in the desk drawer and close it, and it goes back 200 years or something. Yeah. And a, a romance carried out through the letters between these two girls separated by 200 years. That's the most adorable really time travel plot I think I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. Somebody said I saw a Hallmark movie about that, so I guess it's a good yeah. thing we didn't do <laughs> Oh, no. That's one of my mods, Hina. Hina, you ruined them. Thank you. <laughs> no, we, we found out about it. If it's uh, The Lake House, we found out about that um, a little ways into development, and I, I watched that movie with my mom, actually. I was, like, really bad nature. I was like, I gotta watch this. Apparently, I'm ripping it off. And uh, at the end of the movie, I was like, yeah, okay. That's, that's a little too similar. Um, so that, Tina that says a you, she's a thousand percent <laughs> sure you'll do it better. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I hopefully. Um, was I do like the... leaves in that though? I don't know. He... I don't even remember the lake honestly. house. <laughs> Yeah, or that that might not be the movie that they're talking about. I wouldn't be surprised. If it does say Keanu Reeves, Sandra Bullock. Okay, yeah, Begin exchanging love thought. letters with its former resident, a frustrated architect. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we can't compete with Keanu Reeves. We're gonna have to show <laughs> that one. Yeah, he's nobody yeah. can. What if instead of letters, it's tweets? Ooh, there you well, go. There you go. Yeah, okay, much more so modern take. Like the the dark, the dark act two plot twist is that one of them gets canceled. Yeah, there you go. There's yeah. a hashtag made about them, and nobody understands it because they don't live in the same time. <laughs> and it's br- and it's brutal on their ego. <laughs> The uh, one of the things that we did carry over from that, so so as Rachel says, like 200 years in the past, uh, and so the way that we represented that concept in the final version, uh-huh. uh, spoilers, I guess, hey, this is in all of our, our market text, so, so you probably know this. Maddie, the girl that she ends up with, Abigail, is a ghost who's been dead for 200 years, and so wow. um, at first they're not able to to communicate for. and interact with each other normally. And so that was how we how we brought that theme over. Um, originally, they couldn't even see each other, you know, just write letters. Um, and in this, they can see each other, but they can't talk at the start. And so their the relationship develops that way. But yeah, that was how we how we worked that idea into the new thing. That's awesome. So is there? I don't play a whole. I've played a couple of visual novels. Is there an element of player choice, or is it more of about the uh, a linear experience? Um, oh, thank God. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, her, um, right? we have... There's only two choices in the game, but um, they there's three separate endings. Um, they're the pretty much my favorite here? screens I that I've really hope so. directed. Um, <laughs> the choice the choice screens? Yeah, okay. the, the, I put in some animations, and they're really fun. And um, the endings can get pretty dark, um, so if that's not your thing, kind of recommend getting a guide for that. But um, mm, the good yeah. ending... <laughs> The good ending, you'll know when you get it because it is, um, it's beautiful. Uh, the song that we got from In Love with the Ghost is uh-huh. stunning for the credits. And you'll get a nice little epilogue scene, too. Nice. But if you screw it up, it's doomed. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah, sad you're... <laughs> How uh, yeah, How long is the game total? Like, how long does it take oh. to get through? Um, I would say probably an average hey there, of like too. nine to Sorry, ten hours. Wait. It's okay. about one hundred twenty thousand words, okay. and yeah. the the kind of like estimated rates usually like ten thousand to fifteen thousand words an hour. So somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah. Or okay. if you're my dad, it'll take two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to the voices too, it'll take a little bit longer. Like I think most like oh, if I yeah. if I read a hundred thousand yeah. word book, that's about I don't know ten hours. Yeah, yeah, with the voice acting going, it, it's, yeah. it's a long experience. That is no Kira Buckland as Morgan, Are yes, Morgan? if you in the chat. That's right. It's but that's really also nice why we have the uh, oh, I hear her now. Yeah. The, yeah, she's she did great. Awesome. Um, in the top right of the UI, a lot of uh, visual novels have this. You click it, it'll just auto forward after it thinks it gave you enough time to read, so you can just kind of sit back and watch it. That's cool. Mm hmm. Likewise. Charmed, I'm sure. I'm enjoying clicking. <laughs> those, those gamer mechanics. Those gamer mechanics. The chat would get super mad at me when if I didn't have auto forward on during Fire Emblem, <laughs> though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You're Madison, right? I think we spoke online already. Just I'm glad people fine. in the chat like Morgan's nice design. I think she's all of our favorite design. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, basically. Yeah. She's, uh, she's the dev team's favorite character. We basically, I think. Josh and Rachel basically told Rosary to um, draw what she likes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you received yeah. yeah. so I'm glad you Exactly. I like this, this like kind of sweater uh, dress. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hand knit too. Village nice. In the of a huge <laughs> At the uh, beginning, Morgan was just going to be a side character who showed up for like this scene like and this. maybe two or three other times throughout uh-huh. the rest of the game to like too, conveniently right? deliver exposition and then disappear. Um, but we actually oh, we sure liked her so much that we decided to make her in. a main character, and she ends up she ends up playing like a really important role in the choices later in the game too. Uh, so she she definitely grew in importance from what we'd initially planned. All of the girl, all of the characters are girls, yeah. Except for uh, we've got a couple a couple side characters in the village who who are guys. Is One this is this there. Morgan's theme song that I'm listening to right now? I think so. Okay, yeah. I'm just, I'm really enjoying the live mandolin that the, the composer used. Oh, oh yeah. Morgan's Morgan's theme might be my favorite of the character. Themes. Someone in chat just posted it that was their favorite too. 
It's mm-hmm. really, really good. It, it's it's a th- I think it's another like within the dev team I think it's a favorite as well. Just everything Morgan is uh, <laughs> very very well regarded it's about a half internally. Hours ride to the cabin if you guys want to head out. Do you need help with your bags at all? <laughs> Don't even worry about it. I got <laughs> this. Okay. That's cute. Cool. It's, it's fun to write like just a very casually odd character. Like mm-hmm. you've got. T- is pretty eccentric and has a big personality but Morgan is I think just as odd in her own way but in a very very no. subdued way Yeah, which was so much fun to write mm-hmm. and then Madison's kind of your your straight man for lack of a better word right? Uh, <laughs> yeah she's a bit of a stick in the mud yeah. especially at the beginning she's, she's the this one who so keeps cool. everyone on track and who, you know, keeps keeps the uh, keeps the show Even going. There aren't any roads through the Super woods. cool. <laughs> Tara, come take a look at this. Give me a sec. I'm just Is Tara afraid of horses. Of yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> She's wrong. Horses are wonderful. It's true. That was that was a point where it was a bit of a sticking point. Tara is um, probably, I think, the fan favorite character. Yeah. Uh, just speaking of characters that are fun to write, because Tara Tara is a comic relief to a large extent, or I mean, she's, she gets a lot of the jokes. Um, and so Wait, she was one of the characters the who we could kind of be a bit like sillier with. Yeah. Um, one of the, one of the voice clips that we use most often, and, uh, Don't when we'll we were still carriage. working on the, the voice Neither update was her one. saying Yowdy. Um, uh, just, yeah, just all kinds of stuff like that. It's, it's fun to, to write in for her. That's cool. Yeah. I think fans in general tend to love brash characters. It's just a cool, like. Like everyone was always a big fan of Ryuji and like Junpei, who are like the brash characters in Persona. Yeah, like people yeah. love them. I'm I'm playing Persona Five for the first time right now, actually, and yeah. I really like Ryuji. I and really I bet like you love Ryuji. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Precisely. There's just sure a lot of love to give trouble? these like um, you simple you characters, I guess. Yeah. Or just, mm-hmm. you know, they wear their heart on their sleeves. So how can you not? Flexible. Yeah, exactly. I think they're they represent a part of us. You know, like there's there's a brash part of all of us, even if we don't show it. And it's mm-hmm. fun to see kind of somebody who's bombastic like that. Right. Trust me, uh... One thing that's one thing that's also fun is that Terra's design actually has an Easter egg to it that throughout the game you will slowly see, so it's always fun to have stuff that slowly unfolds like that, so if you, if any of you do play it, just keep an eye on her design, and <laughs> you will oh, probably yeah. spot it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, uh, so Evelyn too, um, we haven't met thing? her yet, but she follows that same idea of characters that slowly reveal something as the game goes on. That's cool. Is it like a progressive art thing, or is it just something you notice? Um, it's kind of like a progressive art thing. Okay. But it, it yeah, it, it's kind of a, it's a side detail, at least for Terra. Um, yeah. You can navigate through all this uh, for Terra's little... design, Don't the, worry. the redhead with the moon shirt. Uh-huh. Than just about anything. Besides, the and the hair Doritos. Yes. <laughs> I'm loving the mandolin. Sorry, that just sticks out in my head as a musician. Like it's, it's so good. That's oh, a. Yeah. Uh, it's so good. I wonder honestly. what I wonder what they're playing on. Mm. Yeah, you can always listen to our. We upload all of our OSTs on YouTube. Do you? And uh, yeah, and you can always support the musicians directly um, on their Bandcamp or by buying the OST on Steam. I'm gonna like open a page of it right now. It's the Heart of the Woods OST. And got it. What's this track that I'm listening to called? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, I think it's Restless One, if it's Morgan's theme. Yeah. Uh, if you pause the game, it might show up in the oh, I'm... corner. I'm not entirely sure. Is, that's me trying to pause my OBS. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> Restless One, you're correct. Ah, oh, great. I'm gonna type it in so I remember later. That's awesome. Thank you for the for the link, Hina. Thanks, Hina. 
My mods are honestly they're, they're hot. They're on top like of they're just they're yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um cool. We got a couple of minutes left. Before we go, um I want to give out a copy of the game. Can mods, can you can you can you like load up one of those things that you do? One of those giveaways? <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna buy somebody a copy of the game. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, they're getting it set up. So, what else do you guys want to talk about in the last five minutes while they're setting up the the giveaway? Is there anything about the town or the? Uh, do you mind if I plug our other two games? No, talk about it. I, uh, I wish I was sort of I wish I was better at streaming. I'm not really like a streamer. I'm a voice <laughs> actor that streams sometimes. So like. Streamers can sometimes like just drag in all these elements. I'm, I'm an idiot. I don't really know what I'm doing. You are you are doing good now. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, it's okay. Streaming, you're doing better than me. <laughs> so what's what's the what's you're the fine. you want to uh, please be happy? Is that what you want to yeah, talk about? Yeah, so that, that's when we talked about that. Yeah. And I will post here. I'll send you the link. This is Walk and Key, which uh, Rachel is writing and directing, so she can tell you a bit about that one. Talk to me. And about then it. we also have this. I'll send you in Discord. That's our other one. Okay, so I'll, I'll do Lock and Key real quick so we have time to talk about both. Lock and Key is a magical girl game. I'm a huge fan of the genre. It's one I've wanted to do for like years and years and years. And it's focused, it's like a magical girl murder mystery focused on older retired magical girls. Like okay. About 30 years old, kind of having to come out of retirement for one last job, that sort of thing. Okay. And, and train and train a new magical girl and it's just it's a fun story about two married magical girls and i uh i'm really really excited to share it with everyone that's cool and when we th when do you think that's going to release um we don't have a release date yet i would love to shoot for 2021 definitely not this year but we will uh we will have an update for we'll have an update for you a little later on Sweet. Yeah, shoot that at me and I'll 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 give it to everybody. Oh, thank you. All right, and then, uh, did we do we give away the game yet? Oh, no, it's still going on. Okay. Well, we've got we've got one other game real quick just to go uh, for it. the plug in our last minute here. So that's this one called uh Summer at the Edge of the Universe and it is a solar punk game and I will leave it to a minute to talk about that one a bit. What is solar? I, there's so many punks I can't keep up. <laughs> what is solar punk? Uh, solar punk is about a future that is all moved by green technology and um, just living with nature. Um, a lot of the themes of it are just, um, you know, houses that are built vertically to take up less space, um, okay. tons of greenery growing around it. Um, it is our first, well, it was our first announced multi-route um, visual novel, and okay. then there's also Please Be Happy. Um, it has three girls that you can romance. Um, one of them is Quinn, and they are non-binary. And um, it's really uh, exciting. We announced it with four audio logs, so you can kind of get a glimpse into who each of the characters are. And yeah, uh, I'm going to be writing Quinn's Root, and I'm doing the art alongside um, Addie Rosa. That's awesome. This is actually super weird, because I think the person uh, who is coming on in about Five minutes is a non-binary person named oh, Quinn. Cool, cool. Named Quinn. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, like that's just kind of super strange. Yeah, yeah, it's like a coincidence. <laughs> a coincidence. A coincidence. coincidence. Excellently yeah. done. <laughs> Excellently done. <laughs> Congratulations, Raimi, for winning a copy of the game. I will get a Steam key to you after I buy it. And uh, yeah, I'll talk, talk to Amon. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. This is a really cool game. I love the art. I love the music. I love the story. Um, yeah, keep me posted on on. Please be happy and uh, and your future projects. And yeah. sure thing. Thank you so much for having us. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Of uh, course. Thank you to everyone who. Thank you. To <laughs> okay, I and, will uh, see you guys around. Sounds great. Have fun with Valorous Games. Absolutely. Take care, yeah. guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 This music is so cool. All right, but it's been taken over by some Contra, Super Contra remixes. That was really fun. I'm really glad we got a chance to talk to those folks. This is a really cool, little like.
subgenre of games, uh, and I'm I'm impressed with a two-year dev cycle. Like, can you imagine? Can you imagine a AAA game? Could you imagine them being like, yeah, it's a, it's a two-year dev cycle? No, it's the small agile teams like Studio Alon that can do this stuff, and it's really cool. If they get a chance to kind of uh, express express their art. Really cool. Uh, and neat that they did a, a voice acting package. So, uh, I, will we see Purple Joe is a great question. Mira Mira remembers Purple Joe from the last time I tried to bring in a, a video thing. So I'm gonna get in touch with Austin and Quinn, who are our next guests. Uh, and I'm gonna add... Boop. I'm gonna add them and give a do a little coordinating while I, I, I talk to you guys. That was neat. Um, if you won the giveaway, make sure you get in touch with the mod if you haven't done so already, and I will pass over a Steam key. Uh, Quinn is going to be only on voice, and I'm waiting to hear for, from Austin, and we'll see what's going on with Valorous Games. I think, all right. Give me guys, give me a minute, you guys, and I will be right back. Well, I try to set this up, and as you know, probably f it up.
It's purple Joe. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. Isn't that <laughs> weird? Very purple. Like this is this happens every time I I leave I go to the, my BRB screen start a video chat and come back suddenly I have this like this is my coolest album cover ever <laughs> like I kind of miss it when I reset it let me but I'm I am gonna reset it does it have a very stylish ghost haunting your Discord there we go yeah super super fly ghost so I am going to bring in instead of game capture I'm going to bring in a window capture which is this, and I think that'll work. It's gonna be a little awkward, because I have an ultra-wide monitor. Yeah, that'll do the trick. Yeah. Okay, and the, the right side of the screen has nothing that I need on it, right? Okay. No. Well, that's where, like, or, well, yeah, you, 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 we'll, we'll get into that in a bit. Oh, we just do that. That might work. Cool. There we go. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Austin and Quinn from Valorous Games, who are going to introduce themselves to you to give me time to un everything that I'm doing here. <laughs> do you want to go first, Quinn? Uh, sure. Um, I'm Quinn. My pronouns are they, them. I am the co-writer, I guess. I wrote about 50% of the rules of the Valor's, the Valorous, Valor Heroic role-playing system. It's a thing sort of along the same vein as D&D, but with a very different focus. And I'm sure we'll talk all about that. Um, we started making Valor back in 2006 when we were college roommates, and it came out in 2015. Dang. And it's a labor of love. Yeah, definitely a labor of love. Hey guys, uh Oh my gosh, my that's a huge logo. McKenzie. Sorry. <laughs> that's gigantic. Okay. Whoa, okay, I just saw it. Yeah, that's uh you've super valorous. You have so much valor, oh my god. Yes, we do absolutely have so much valor. Um <laughs> we are never satisfied with halfway measures on anything. That's right. Um but yeah, yeah so my name's Austin McKenzie. I am um uh, pronounce uh, he him. Uh, I am a half Vietnamese designer and uh, co-writer of Valor. Also, I am the uh, CEO owner, whatever you would call it, of Valorous Games. I'm the I'm the one who actually enjoys the business aspect and decided to carry <laughs> that on. Whereas yeah. Queen just gets to you know, sit sit around and like make cool things and yeah, I have fun. I've given up my sort of financial stake in Valor at this point, but I still love it a whole bunch and contribute when, whatever I can to its further development. But it is Austin's business first and foremost right now. Cool. All right, this is going to look awful. Nope, that's not the way I wanted. Nope, that's awful. I can OBS, I promise. So tell us, tell us about this game. I'm going to turn this ridiculous music uh, down. Sure, well, I'll, I'll take that, that. I'll feel that one if that's all right. Yeah. Uh, so we're both a pair of big nerds, grew up playing Dungeons and Dragons and watching a bunch of anime. And there's, oh, hi, Hannah. Um, sorry. Um, there's something kind of that after playing a lot of D&D &D, that we were looking, there was something in how the game plays that was missing for the experience we were looking for. Uh-huh. And it's that in D&D, &D, when you fight, the fight is about what move do you do, how effective are you at that thing, who's going to win through the exchange of tactics and weapons and such. But sure. when you see these big, exciting fights in shows like Hunter X, like Hunter Hunter and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which I believe you did voices for both of those. Uh, I did, <laughs> as a matter of fact. <laughs> then there's a different, completely different flow to how combat works, where combat isn't just about who does which moves and who wins, it's an expression of character. Right. Like, every character has these crazy unique powers and the like emotions and ideals they bring into each fight will clash just as intensely as the actual physical physicality of combat will. So like the, the whoever's who wins in the end is gonna be who's right as often as it's going to be who's stronger. And we wanted a game that kind of brings that to the D&D &D dimension. Okay. Of 
that sort of high character focused combat that still has a bit of tactical crunch to it but it's your character she every character she in valor is completely unique there's no classes you build your own fighting style from the ground up and the the character sheet is an expression not just of what you can do but who your character is and that and like the sort of emotional anchor you have to the fight is going to give you direct mechanical rewards that will make it easier to win the fight as well so can you give me and an example sort of, of how those mechanics play out or are we, or am i getting too far ahead of us um well, there's let's I guess we can touch on the very basic one that the game is named after, which is that everyone has in addition to you have your you have your health and your stamina and you have something called valor that starts every battle at zero and just slowly goes up over time. But depending on your character's emotional stake in the fight or you're just playing them up to the hilt while you're role playing it, you'll get awarded additional valor. And then whenever, if you have make an attack and your attack roll, you roll a one, you flub it, then you can spend some of your valor to just directly increase that result and change that miss into a hit. Okay. So the more your, <coughs> so the more you're invested, the more your character has a real concrete motivation to win and is expressing that as they fight, you're actually, you'll be gaining more valor and be succeeding when you otherwise would be failing. And that will often make the difference between a win and a loss. And and does you find that that, I, I don't know how often, this game is out, right? It's not like being tested. It's out, yes. Okay. So do you find that it, it increases the incentive to role play? Absolutely. That something that I always like to do, especially with new groups, is early in a game, I'll toss, I'll get, I'll award Valor for basically like any kind of decent role playing I see. But then over the course of the campaign, they'll start setting the bar higher and higher for how intense and how cool stuff has to be for you to get Valor for it. Okay. And as a result, you just see some totally amazing stuff happen by the end of a game. That's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, if you don't mind my interjecting a bit, a lot of. I think what we're trying to do is, is encourage the roleplay and also encourage investment in in the character. Uh, everything about how we set up character building in Valor is so that your character is yours. Um, you're not you're not trying to to fit an idea into a box. You're just you're you're asked to paint outside the lines mm -hmm. and to just really invest in who you are who you're playing and and have a lot of fun doing it i've like i've had a guy rap at my table before with <laughs> i remember that amazing um the uh some of these characters here and, and if you're interested joe i think i think you can help us demonstrate this game so we can we can sort of show you how of this course works. uh since really it a lot of valor is just about having fun and screaming about how awesome you are and how you can't fail at this and and like having a really good time. We're 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 a lot more narrative than D and D, but we still have that that rule set that you can really engage with. So these characters that you're seeing here, um, they're from probably one of our most popular demos ever. I'm actually I have a few slots left. I'm going to be running these for Gen Con Online at the end of the month. Okay. Um, uh, there is a small charge. Uh, it's a two dollar charge to put in. I I tried to make it free, but they wouldn't let me. I apologize. <laughs> um, so uh, the the premise of this this little adventure we put together is you are adventure chefs who are taking part in the Valorous Chef tournament. Nice. So your goal is to go out and slay some food based monsters and then cook them in a head to head battle with the Valorous Chefs. Okay. Uh, in which in which you will also be you know like throwing tables and knives at the at the chefs to disrupt them while they're doing the same All right, I've always wanted to stab an asparagus, so. So it's a lot of fun there. So uh, if you want to, uh, on the tab, there should be a character sheet option right next to the, you see the two black word bubbles uh, on, on the right of their screen. Uh, there should be a tab right next to it that you can click, which is kind of like a newspaper, a white newspaper looking thing. Upper right. 
So it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of right above the chat if you go all scroll your cursor all the way to the right there where you go. see all that green text. Okay. All right. So we prepared ten pre-made characters here. Um, Gordon Ramsay's the. Are... <laughs> oh, okay. I, I need to just say the Gordon Gordon Ramsay's the seventeenth. That was my idea. And it's a good one. <laughs> Caesar says Caesar salad. Alfonso, uh, oh my god, these are salad, awesome. I believe is the uh, proper pronunciation. It's all salad. Rosemary thyme, sashimi, these are great. The tenderizer, that's awesome. It's like part pro wrestler and, and name, special part- Special thanks yeah. to, the, uh, to my Final Fantasy XIV uh, free company mom for naming the tenderizer's attacks for me since uh, she, is, she is a luchadora, so she has some, some uh, attacks in Spanish. Like and she's legitimately a luchadora in real life? I'm sorry, what was that? Legitimately like a luchadora in real life? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, awesome. That's her thing. She's a, she's a, she's a food luchadora, you see? Oh, okay. Um, and then Gordon Ramsay's is probably like the most clever slash that's, word that's criminal fantastic. I'll ever be again. <laughs> yeah, okay, so do to, I have to pick one? Click on one of these sheets. Oh, okay. You can open it up. I want to see, see Gordon Ramsay's. Can... That's amazing. Yeah. All I see is a picture. Yeah, go ahead and double um, click on that. All right, so. Oh, you're gonna need to um, I'm mark to these assign, characters yep, as, I'm yeah. going to assign that character to you. All right, yeah. Okay, okay that's what I was gonna pick anyway. Uh, while you guys are sorting that out, I just want to mention for posterity, it was great hearing Studio Elon on before us. Love Heart of the Woods, got all the endings. Looking forward to playing their previous game on that giant itch.io social justice bundle that came out. Nice. Did you hear the funny my, thing my, at the end about them, their next me. game being about a person named Quinn? Yes, I actually, on social media, have a screenshot of that character as my Oh, icon. awesome. Just because there is a Quinn, and the Quinn, the character Quinn is non-binary, and I'm also non-binary. Perfect, so, so you knew about it before me. this stream? Yes, I did. Wow, okay. All right, go ahead and uh, open up Ramsey's again. You should have yep. full access to his character sheet. If I you want to pull him up. I don't see anything here. I just see bio and info, and it's got him holding a bunch of cooking utensils. Yeah, you put him in here. There, I'll I have on it. Close it yeah, and I'll open just... it one more time. I don't believe you. Rule 20 doesn't always like us, oh, so... Uh... See, does it Did work with anybody work? else? It says, can be edited and controlled by J. Edward Z. Julianne Fries, I just got it. Yeah, try refreshing the the, the tab, maybe. So I'm just weird. gonna say everyone can edit everything. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll go through and do that while we're. Uh... <sighs> oh wow! Now everybody well, like now everybody knows my middle name. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Was that a secret? No, it just said I. I don't even know why I had this on my roll twenty. I I think I I loaded roll twenty once and never played it. Um. Yeah, so let's try and pull up that character one more time and see what can see if we get lucky. Negative. Come on. Man, let's roll 20s killing me here. Anybody else? Al Dente. <laughs> Linda oh, Fieri, I love it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's causing that. It's is it possible scary. for me to share my screen? I could kind of walk people through. I think maybe I could figure this out. I think maybe. Yeah, go ahead and and go for it. All right, give me one second here. Should I keep my roll twenty tab open because I just closed it like an idiot? Oh uh, yeah. no, you should be fine. Okay. Let's see. Uh want to I did the first thing we just mentioned bleach while we're setting this up i actually ran a full level one to level 20 campaign inspired by bleach as a a viking setting instead of a japanese mythology setting amazing so all the characters were like ein Herjar from valhalla and it was it was loads of fun okay now i've got your screen and i've got it loaded now i have to remove the crop filter that i had on your i can do this i can do this. Oh, it's me on me here. It's a little strange. <laughs> All right. Um, All right so we apologies to chat. Screen. I won't be able to see what you guys are saying since I'm going to try and keep it on, uh, on the screen go. for now. Okay. 
All right, so you good? Okay, so let's I've let's got look the at. Open. All right, cool. Let's look at Gordon Ramsay's here. So, uh, as we said, uh, these characters were all uniquely designed. So Gordon Ramsay specializes in uh, three of the of the five stats. He's what we call a balanced uh, balanced fighter build. Uh, in general, the thing with Valor is you'll pick certain attributes to specialize in that really kind of define how your characters work. And one of the big things with the technique creation system is, depending on what you're good at, that will sort of determine how you make your techniques and what you specialize in that in, in that respect. So, okay. for example, a strong spirit character like Gordon Ramsay's here uh, can do really powerful blast effects and line effects. Um, Whereas having really good agility means that he can move very quickly. He can um, throw throw daggers or shoot bows or whatever long distance. Mm -hmm. And then having guts uh, just means he's very sturdy. He's very durable, um, and he's also very um, he has a, he has a presence about him, uh, in, in that he has a very strong personality, which you know seemed appropriate for for uh, Gordon Ramsay's here. Um, I couldn't. I couldn't say why. Uh, yeah, um, guts generally we've run as a, it's kind of a special attribute. It's the only. It's the only attribute you can't do any attacks with. But it just the higher your guts is, the harder you are to kill. The, the harder you are to stop. Okay. Because it's just that tenacity, to determination to keep fighting and never give up. Sweet. Yeah, so skills um skills should look pretty familiar to folks who've not necessarily played D D but have maybe played some other games like white wolf or shadow run or something like that where, uh no one no one actually plays gerbs like you'll make characters in <laughs> once in high school <laughs> um but uh what, you, what you're doing here is you're kind of picking skills on a list to do things that are of interest. So Gordon has kind of a mix. Some of his skills, which you won't see any text for, just increase his um, his core parameters. So like Balanced Fighter makes him able to really excel at three attributes instead of two. Okay. Um, intimidate means he's very intimidating. You know, he, he might, you know, start cussing you out and telling you about how bad of a chef you are, you know, or something like that. Okay. Uh... And so that's a, that's an active skill, so that he can actually use that to to you know shake someone's confidence. Um, he can also feint someone to fake them out, get a bit of extra damage. Um, he always begins the scene with one valor because he's just he's very in your face and and always kind of at one hundred percent. Always ready to go. Always ready to go. Okay. So so these were kind of pick, picked off the list of skills and abilities, uh, passive and special things that really, really make your character feel like they do. Um, and then we're getting into techniques. So these are uh, techniques is I, I feel like I would say our most unique system in Valor in that when you are building a Valor character, you are you literally customize every single attack that they have. OK, so all all of these abilities were custom made specifically for him um based on kind of how, how you put them together so what we do is we give you building blocks and then you kind of define that um uh so when you're making a technique you'll start with the core which you see here this is what uh we call a damage core uh -huh. um you hit someone right yeah. pretty pretty basic it hurts. so yeah you can either choose to increase your core power uh which i have not done for this particular attack um, which will make it hit more, or you can give it what are called modifiers, which will change the function of how the technique will play out. Okay. So in this case, demolishing diatribe here, where uh, he brings his foes to their knees with a barrage of cutting remarks. Um, I've given it uh, two levels of the blast radius modifier and the special knockdown modifier. So what happens is whenever Gordon Ramses uses this technique, he targets everybody within two spaces of him. Okay. Uh, so uh, a five by five uh, space on a grid, basically. Right. And anyone who he hits gets knocked down mm -hmm. just because he's he's insulting them so powerfully. Nice. Um, but uh, we've also attached a limit to it, which you see here is Valor One. So in order to use this technique, he must have exact, he must have at least one Valor. He doesn't have to spend it. He just has to use, or he just has to have it. Okay. Uh, and um, that will reduce the stamina cost, which is your, your MP gauge, basically. Okay. Uh, I just want to 
A, address a comment in chat here from Thunder Catherine says, I would like to play these kind of games if there wasn't so much math involved. I have a great, great news for you. There's a custom Roll20 character sheet if you're playing on Roll20, Roll20, which we are looking at right now. It does all of the math for you. That's uh, actually someone else in chat, Alchemizzi, said, that's why Quinn helped develop the Roll20 API. <laughs> that's, <laughs> it's not an API, but yes. Yeah, um, the, yeah, this character sheet is, is Quinn's own design. It is publicly available on Roll20, uh, which you can get, you can get an account for free. Yeah. Uh, and you can just play this game. Uh, you'll note, uh, I've, I've filled in text here, but, um, the... The sheet itself won't tell you what the abilities are. You still need to kind of have the book for reference. Uh, Quinn is also working on kind of its own standalone program, which mm -hmm. will, uh, once complete, it will it will actually load all of the abilities in the book. And it'll have some handy GM tools, like being able to just randomize an NPC stat on the fly so that okay. you can. Yeah. You can just run games and run that easily i'm i have about 450 pages of a bestiary all written um but 450 pages equals a lot of artwork and that is very expensive it's for very expensive who is, is self-funding their own business so is this like um you have to forgive me like i haven't done too much tabletop D, &D is probably the most i've ever mm -hmm. experienced and i've only really ever experienced it over the last like six months so like mm -hmm. you made the mechanics of valor and there's also you have these kind of like preset things that like if you don't want to go in and and be like man i don't feel like writing all of these um techniques and attributes but i really like the game style you can kind of like pick a um i'm sure there's a word for this that i, I don't know like a preset like a all pre-made uh, set of stuff that's what yes. um, foes as we call it is well, be, uh, right? uh, there, there, yeah, there are a few options. So the um, the the core Valor book actually contains a pre-made adventure. Mm -hmm. So it's all of the stats, all of the story, everything that's been outlined. Uh, the foes book, which I mentioned, uh, I'm looking at some like Patreon options to just get it out there uh, as I as I try and you sure. know, get art up to actually get a full release. Um, but that one hasn't been hasn't been released to the public yet. So you know, it's kind of a uh, I've got it, and I want to get it out. Uh, still working on that. We're also uh, some of the art you saw is from the upcoming Adventure Path Best in Class, uh, which um, that book uh, will be potentially a standalone. You can use it with the core book, or you can just use it on your own. Um, so it'll have full play rules. It uh, kind of like this. It will have ten pre-made characters plus I think three or four Kickstarter bonuses for. Our, our wonderful backers who who contributed to bringing it to life nice um so they'll be completely pre-made levels one through six they'll have character sheets for each of those levels and full play rules and you can pick that up i think price is probably going to be somewhere in the in the 15 to 20 for the physical uh mm -hmm. paperback and then somewhere in the ballpark of like ten dollars for the pdf and just just having that means you can play that one adventure without having to buy anything else um one of the things um I, me being kind of from uh, the more min minority culture, um, a lot of a lot of folks who I want to have more voice at the table mm -hmm. uh, and and to just be able to play these games more. A big a big kind of issue that D and D runs into is to start it, you need three fifty sixty dollar books, and that's that's a lot of money. That's a lot. To, it's a big chunk of change to drop. Yeah, you need some big books and yeah. Yeah, and then you, you need your specialty dice and all of that. So uh, accessibility for for everyone is really something we're trying to target uh, mm -hmm. with with how we set this up. Because I, I I I love role playing games. I've been I've been making them since before I knew D and D existed, and uh, I I want everyone to really just be able to experience how much fun these games can be. And I you know I would. I I think I think Quinn will agree with me. We designed Valor to just be really fun to play. Like and... we I mean we designed Valor because we wanted to make the game we wanted to play. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, a I game mean, where you're. It, it says some. It says something about our success there that I spent nine. Ye we spent nine years writing this game and getting it out there, and I still play in different Valor games about four days a week. 
Nice. Just because I want to play more Valor. That's awesome. I'm I'm just like sitting here sort of jealous that you play tabletop games four days a week. <laughs> like that's I really cool. I, I am actually very jealous of Quinn too, by wow. the way. Like I wish I had that kind of time too. <laughs> that's awesome. But yeah, so how about this, Joe? Since Shoot. um since we've got this out, why don't I, I bring Gordon Ramsay's in here? Uh, and we can kind of show you just just what what a combat might look like. I love um, it. So your Gordon Ramsay is here. You're you're fighting. Uh, this this is what we call a shambling salad. It is I love one it. of the monsters that you must slay so that you can get ingredients for your side dish. Okay. Uh, for the final cooking. <laughs> I love that concept. Every everyone who who's played this demo has just loved it. It's so much fun. It's I believe uh, the first the first public Valor demo we ever wrote. That's awesome. I feel like I have to, the if I'm going to do Gordon Ramsay, public... I have to turn my mic way, way down. <laughs> yeah, the first public demo where we weren't uh, taking from other other folks uh, copyrighted material that we did not have control over. So uh, when you're when you're playing Valor, you've got... I'm going to move this, uh, this, this slime over here a little, just, just so that you can see him better. Okay. Um, so when you're playing Valor, you, you've got, uh, three actions. You've got an attack action, a support action, and a move action. Uh, move action lets you move your movement stat. So in this case, Gordon Ramsay is being extremely quick as he is. He can move up to six spaces. Okay. And uh, an attack action lets you attack someone. Uh, finally, a support action lets you do like healing or a special skill. In Gordon Ramsay's case, he has the skill Intimidate and he has the skill Faint, which are both support actions uh, that can kind of set him up to, to do better. Uh, and then you have your, techni your techniques off the attack action, like your damage abilities. Um, in his case, he's got some... Uh, He's got a, a inspiring insults here, where he, where he makes his party members better by by screaming at them, but in a very loving manner. Um, and then also, just for fun, uh, every five levels you get what's called an ultimate attack, which uh, here you can see his his ultimate attack is censored <laughs> for television broadcasts. That's awesome. Um, in this case, it is a very very powerful attack that requires a bit more uh, oomph behind it. So in this case, he has to have at least two valor. And he needs to spend one Valor to do it, but it will also shoot a line out uh, 10 spaces and then target uh, two spaces on either side of the line. So it's like five spaces and it will make the entire area dark because, like I said, it, he's just he's getting a bit too spicy with his words here. And he so it's needs just a to... big black sensor bar. Yeah, exactly. And a bunch of. Exactly. Yeah, um, absolutely. Good. And these attacks you are are all one offs. You can only use them once per fight, so you got to make them count. Yeah. All of these the attacks attack here are once per fight, or just the uh, just just the ultimate attacks. Okay. But right now, uh, Gordon, you're being menaced by a shambling salad. So what would you like to do about that? So what are my what are my options again? Like, so I have a, a move, a support, and a. And, a, yeah. and an attack action to use one of your abilities. So uh, Gordon's abilities are the, the Demolishing Diatribe, which we mentioned, which will knock someone down. Um, he has Precision Prep, where he just knifes everyone who's standing around him. Okay. Um, he has Inspiring Insults. This one's not going to be too valuable to you because you're not fighting with any allies right now. You probably scared them all off by telling them that they were bad. Yeah. Um, he also has Immolating Invective, where he insults someone so hard that they catch fire. Amazing, sick um, burn. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that one, that one, he has to be like right next to them, but he'll he'll burn everyone around him. And then, of course, he has the the ultimate ability. So, um, also to just to keep in mind, um, the more you role play, the more you you kind of play how you're how you're trying to to portray this character. The more valor valor you'll get. So then you can use that to do even fun even more fun things. Now, if I set the if I set the cabbage on fire, does that mean it's no longer a usable ingredient? I would say that you're a skilled enough chef to the point where you will make sure that 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 I will only sear that the cooking cabbage. will only enhance the flavor. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so let me see. Let me see. What's his support? Do, do you have to do them in a certain order? Can you do move attack nope. support? Okay. Any order. So Any his, order you want. His. Uh, these are all different. Yeah. Um, so the, the so two, 
Yeah. Go, sorry, go ahead, Quinn. Yeah. All right. uh, <laughs> the two. I'll go. Uh, so the two things on here that are support actions you can do. They both say support action in the notes. They are intimidate okay, and faint. Uh, intimidate. Well, you make a roll against them, and if you succeed, they get shaken, which means they get a penalty to everything until they take a moment to sort of center themselves. And faint will mean you make a roll against them, and if you succeed, then they're off guard, and your next attack will do more damage. Okay, cool. So I want to intimidate the cab. How? What's my range on intimidate? Uh, is it five spaces? Yeah, five yep, spaces. Five okay, I want to intimidate the cabbage, which is never a sentence that I ever thought I would say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go ahead and in the chat, you can type uh, slash roll 1d10. Right, and yeah. that should give you a roll here. Where am I? Oh, I left, I left it. I have to go back. Oh, it's well, okay. here, I'll go, I'll go ahead and roll this for you. Sure. And I'll, I'll add your attribute on top of that as well. So you rolled a 12 here. So the, now the cabbage is going to desperately attempt to not get intimidated by by your uh, by your steady barrage of extreme profanity, I imagine, is, is what's going down here. Uh, and because the, the salad is a bit weaker than what you are, um, it's going to defend at a bit of a penalty against you. So... Uh, we will see if it manages to shake it off, uh, or or we'll, or more more accurately, we'll see if I'm able to to type a roll correctly. <laughs> no, I'm not. Here, oh, <laughs> you beat me. Okay, I just okay. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna roll a six. Uh, I'm gonna add an eight on top of that due to its stat. So uh, its ultimate roll will be uh, fourteen. So uh, it looks like, unfortunately, you did fail to intimidate the salad. It may not actually understand what you're saying to it. It's, it's hard to tell. Okay. Um, but you can still move and you can still attack. All right, I'll, I'll go right up into, into its grill and, and give it a, some, some stab, stabby stab. All right, so uh, Quinn, if you want to give me a dex roll on a nine. Uh, sure, I've got the sheet up here, so we'll just dex roll. There you go. That's a pretty good one. And we'll have the salad here attempt to defend itself. Uh, and here, the, the here's precision. another... This is the precision prep technique, right? Yes. Yes. So let's let's actually do it the flashy way then, where I click this button and magic happens. There we go. Nice. Macros. The win. Yeah, Quinn is a very, very talented programmer. Nice. And I, I don't understand how they do any of what they do. But I very much appreciate it. So uh, the the salad uh, is not very. Er, actually, no, it was pretty dexterous. I accidentally rolled R. I apologize. Um, we'll pretend that was dexterity. Uh, so the the salad will attempt to dodge out of the way, but unfortunately, you are just overwhelmingly powerful, and you dice the hell out of it. Um, so because this this ability also has a reposition, you can you can make it move up to two spaces wherever you want. Uh, well, I guess, all right, you knock it back two spaces. Yeah, absolutely. So the the salad is going to get knocked back two spaces, and then it's going to take some damage here. Um, its defense is not great. Its defense is 21, so that means you're going to do a total of uh, 44 damage to it. Okay. Yeah, and roll 20 can do that math for you, so... Can or cannot? Can, absolutely. Which is also very important because uh, mental math is hard. Yes, especially when you're on the spot. So it's got, what, 103 health, so... That wasn't what I wanted it to do. There we go, okay. Um, unfortunately, though, this has made the salad angry. So the salad is now going to attack with some razor lettuce. Bring uh, it! Which, and this this is also a dexterity-based attack. So it's going to use its own attack here. Ooh, that was a good roll. Now, it's attacking you with dexterity as well. Your dexterity is pretty good. Um, if, if it weren't, you would have the option to kind of substitute uh and choose how you defend yourself but at a slight penalty so if you're yeah, very muscular so, for example so based, ahead, normally but... when you're doing its trading attacks it's whatever 
attribute your attack is based on. So if it's a dexterity attack, you roll dexterity to attack, and they roll dexterity to defend. Okay. And, but if your dexterity is perhaps bad, then, like, if you were a strength-based character, then you could say, oh, I'm going to use my muscle to defend instead of my dexterity. But because you're you're swapping out there's a penalty which in muscles in the case of defending with strength means that even if you block you'll take a, like a small amount of chip damage just from sort of absorbing the attack with your body okay yeah but in this case it will just be a, a hey look a defense roll of 19. It's a good thing Quinn's rolling for you because uh, usually, usually when folks are playing with me, the dice hate them. Um, Quinn, also being a GM, seems to have some counter power here. Nice. Uh, so, so I with roll that higher. roll, uh, you, I rolled it definitely really depends. Yeah, you you take no damage whatsoever. Had you tied, by the way, um, the ties always go to the aggressor. Uh, Valor in design is is about kind of that momentum. So like we always round up in Valor because bigger numbers are exciting. Um, the aggressor is always the one who's going to come out on top in a in a confrontation like this. So there's no um, like AC. It's just you're 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 pitting stats against each other. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That that really we felt was more appropriate to how anime works. Because it's not, you're not rolling against a passive like, oh, I'm wearing a full plate mail. Let's see if it bounces off. It's, I'm attacking you, you're defending yourself. Yeah. Uh, we'll see, we'll see who does it better. And that makes sense to me. The AC mechanic in D&D, &D, like, I don't, it makes, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me sometimes. But, uh, yeah. That's cool. That's a, that's a cool, that's a cool idea. Yeah, it's it's also really good to keep your players engaged. Um, we've, I think we've gotten Valor to the point where once you've really built your character and you just you know them so well, mm -hmm. our combat actually runs pretty quickly. But um, yeah. one of the nice things about the active defense is you're not gonna have you know players on their phone because you know the turns taking two the turn hours. takes an hour and a half. Yeah. Right, uh, they could be attacked at any moment, and if you're running through it real quick, uh, it keeps everyone really engaged at the table. That's cool. Uh, yeah, you do need a little bit of patience for D for, for D and D, and like the willingness little, yeah. to just kind of like have the gameplay not include you for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, now, uh, now that you've both attacked, uh, this is what, Sorry, what we call the end of the round. My cat. <laughs> no worries. My, mine are being good, but we'll we'll see if that that remains the case. Um, so you you both will gain a valor, which means since you start with one valor, you now have two valor. Uh, which means, if you were interested, uh, you could use this attack right here, censored for television broadcast, because you now meet the requirements to do it. Uh, this well, attack. I mean, is... why not? We we only have three minutes left. I'm gonna I'm gonna burn. Yeah, exactly, I'm gonna burn this. Exactly. All right. Did you wanna did you wanna describe this attack or, or you give us some give us some explanation as to so, how you're doing? Or this? perhaps some voice acting. So yeah, like I right. think if well you know my stream is typically pretty PG, but if Gordon was to, if he was gonna come come in there, he's gonna, if I have to turn my mic down, I'm gonna break it. I mean, are you son of <laughs> like it's just gonna be mostly that. Just I I, I would definitely say that's uh, and we'll give you three valor just just for kicks here. Okay. Um, so. You're spending one, so we'll have four valor left. You can't uh, tell if it's and or Morse code at this point. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's show you what this looks like. So. All of that, that is that is the attack that you put out. And I, I off-centered it, which I apologize for. But uh, you you could actually choose to no, do just... that if if you wanted. You you can make the line start at any point on your body. Um, but you're just, just immolating this thing here. Uh, Quinn, if you want to give me the, the attack roll on that, I'll have the salad desperately attempt to defend itself. Another excellent attack roll. Oh. This is a fun opportunity, actually. <laughs> I was I was hoping the dice would like me, and they do. So uh, another another fun mechanic here is to critical hit someone. You need to exceed their roll by ten. Okay. 
Um, and you have four valor, which means if you spend three, you can boost your roll by five, which will mean that you will, in fact, critical hit this thing. Spend it. All right. So Make instead of <laughs> instead of this 98 damage, you are instead looking at... I'll, I'll do the math here. What's its, what's the defense on the monster? I said it was like 12 or something. Uh, tw or resistance. 21. Uh, resistance 24. 24. Uh, that comes up to over 100 damage. And the thing will, only has 59 will... health left. That would have killed it if it was at full health. Right, exactly. Nice. <clears throat> but yeah, that that is Valor. That is that is how how we play. We are about shouting attack names, giving dramatic monologues. Um, I know you've you've been enjoying D and D. Our our hope is that you know folks who really love D and D will will give Valor a try uh, and and enjoy it too. Um, kind of our goal uh, our goal at least for now is to be whenever someone wants to run any kind of anime style game, they're they're picking Valor to do it. Um, we've done we've done like Fire Emblem in, in it. Uh, I know oh, that's fun. We're going to be doing Trails of Cold Steel in it. Uh, Dang. Pretty, yeah. pretty much I've done, any, I've done any games movie. based on like Persona, Bleach, Dragon Ball Z, all just all kinds of stuff. Sky's the limit. Yep. And that's cool, you guys. Well, thank you for taking me through through Valor. That was uh that's a neat neat twist on a on a tabletop game. I'd say that like, oh I've never yeah, seen it before, but like I've never really seen a whole lot of tabletop games before. But <laughs> but it seems very unique based on based on what I the limited knowledge I have of tabletops. Um What's what's next for Valor? Uh, Best in Class should be coming out soon. I just sent the uh, first beta build over to our uh, designer. I've <laughs> this this book has been an entire year of like production chain falling apart on me. Right. But I'm finally back up and running, and it's very nice. Um, COVID also helped with that. I of bet course, it did. COVID, it's helping everything. Um, so my hope is that backers will, within the next week, get a copy of the PDF of the um, the beta build, which is just going to be missing a bit of the art. Um, I'm hoping to send that off to the printers within the next few months. Uh, and beyond that, I want to do like everything I can. I can do. I've got. Uh, that foes book I'm trying to get completed. I'm working on another adventure, which uh, lets you do something that you can't necessarily do as much in D&D, which is a bard party. The idea being that you are a group of traveling musicians, <laughs> uh, rock musicians, trying to uh, make your make a name for yourself. So you're going around hunting monsters to keep your uh, your crappy tour bus running, and uh, and while while you're doing that, you're trying to make a make a band name. Um, that sounds freaking so stuff awesome. Like that, uh, um, I, I want to try and get some live play sessions going on because despite Twitch not really being a thing for for tabletop RPGs, we we accidentally designed a game that's perfect for it. So Great. you know, try and get try and get that. So yeah, a lot um, of entertainment streaming value for a, a a setup like that for sure. Absolutely. Well, cool. But thank you guys for coming on. It was really nice meeting you and talking about Valor. Thank yeah, you it was great. Um, also, if uh, if you would like, I, I'm happy to leave some uh, some free uh, ebook promo codes with you. Yes, definitely. Um, you I, about I, to your chat. How, how many are you going to leave? Uh, well, five sound good. Mods, give away five things right now. Do your do your thing. Press those buttons. Let's draw five winners. <laughs> All right. I will. I will uh, get the codes generated and i will send them to you um you'll have to bear with me as i put that together that's okay uh, we can we can uh we keep track of all our giveaway winners so we can always kind of like go back to them with the codes i i i don't have a code for the giveaway i did in, in the last hour so i have to go get oh, look that at all, before look at all those people being excited about valor love there it is valor, it. valor 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 yeah so that is absolutely what we love to see beautiful but yes, thank you so much for having us. Of course, uh, thank you for coming it on. It's been neat yeah, learning yeah, about what you do. Great being here. Have a happy non-binary people's day. Yeah, you too. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't plan this at all. I, I uh, <laughs> Allegra Clark alerted it, or alerted me to it earlier today. It, it was a very it was a very opportune time and a good day for Quins. It seems like. Yeah, really. Like Quins are really yeah. winning today. So congratulations, Quinn, on being a Quinn. Thank you. You've done well. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming by, and good luck with everything in the future. All right, thank you. Thank Take you care. so much. Take, Take care. care. Bye.
Okay. Chat a tat. What's going on, schmoes? I hope that was I hope that was fun for you. I've knocked my green screen out. That was fun. I uh when when we originally when we hooked up with Valor, I didn't know it was a tabletop game, and then I, I was glad that it was when they told me more about the, the project. That was really cool. The uh, the tabletop game scene, my limited exposure to it comes from basically listening to the Adventure Zone and then playing D and D myself. So uh, when when the Adventure Zone kind of moved away from D and D and started exploring other game things, it was when I finally realized like, oh, not everything is D and D, and it's really cool to see the like, you know, D and D built a foundation for people to enjoy games and and role play and and act and be be silly or be serious or be whatever. Um, and uh, it was it's really cool to see people taking if there's one thing that we do great as humans, it's it's kind of like take ideas and run with them in whatever uh, direction it takes for us. And what they said at the beginning was, you know, they make they took they made the game they wanted to play. And that's honestly what we're all doing as artists. We're drawing the things we want to see. We're writing the books we want to read. We're playing. We're developing the games that we want to play. So really, really cool. I was really happy to, to meet uh, these folks. Um, so that's it. That's Amplify. I hope to do this maybe once a month. Um, if you have a suggestion of a developer who represents a underprivileged community, um, black, indigenous, people of color, LGBT, all that stuff, uh, female developers, all that kind of, whatever. Feel free to use the form. It's my pinned tweet right now. Uh, suggest, suggest someone. Suggest a project that inspires you, and I will get them on, and uh, um, and let them take the platform for a little bit. So that's really cool. Who won? So many people won. Fox, Hana, Soft Guitar, Maki Rose, Shayna. Congratulations! We'll get you those ebook codes for Valor, and I hope you have a great time with them. That is going to be it for me today, guys. We've got Shadowverse tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I will have donuts. I'm excited about it. And then Thursday, we're going to be doing some Just Cause. But more importantly, or of equal importance, there's going to be some fun announcements for new... Uh, some some stuff we'll be doing to celebrate the one-year anniversary of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Thank you guys so much. Ooh, wait, let's raid somebody. Who are we going to raid? Does anybody have, like, an appropriate... LGBT, L LGBT, you guys know what I mean. I can't speak. Uh, is there somebody that you'd like to raid? Because we can do that. Go raid Hannah. Who's Hannah? Oh, yeah. Start it up. Get out of here. Go do your thing. We'll raid you. We'll give you the community. Okay. So, while we're waiting for that, get out so we can, get out so we can come to your house. Get out of my house so we can go to your house. Uh, and that'll be fun. We'll all hang out. Go, go, go! Lena's Inception. Well, then I will definitely do that. A house raid. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Sweet. So what do you guys think I'm going to announce on Thursday? I'm curious. Like, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? Are you really feeling it? Scary piano hyper headbang. Claude the movie. Man, that'd be great. Oh, this is Weasty. We're, uh, me and him are working on a track right now, as a matter of fact. I'm gonna announce an announcement. A new casting announcement, Cold Steel 4. Persona 6 main character. A Verdant Wind movie. That's, that's two votes for, uh, uh, of a movie.
Fire Emblem Shadowverse collaboration would be really interesting, wouldn't it? Genealogy remake. Joe, the Nintendo Switch has games. What? What? I remember that. Do the, I think, I think the mod, I, I told you mods, right? Hina, you're freaking me out. I think I announced what I was, I think I told the mods what I was going to announce. Didn't I? I know, I definitely did. I definitely put it in chat. In Discord. Oh, Hina. Shut up. You're just messing with me. I don't even need to swear. I just, I actually swear with facial expressions. Love you too, Hina. All right, I am waiting for Hannah to pop in there. What is this? A 24 hour stream? Guys, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I will never do a 24 hour stream. I'm sorry. 100% guaranteed, you were never gonna see me for 24 hours straight. I have a hard time doing a three hour stream. Are you guys kidding me? 24 hour stream. A sub goal for a 24 hour stream? I, I can't imagine what the sub goal would be for a 24 hour stream. I, yeah, 100,000 subs. You give me 100,000 subs, I will definitely do a 20, 24 hour stream. Piece of cake. If I get 100,000 subs on Twitch, I'll stream for 48 hours. And I'll eat sub sandwiches the entire time. All right, I'm setting up this raid. You guys are gonna pop in there and say hi. It has been awesome hanging out with you guys today. I hope you like the Amplify stream. If you have more suggestions, make sure you look at my pinned tweet so you can get me more cool devs to do cool stuff. And I will see you guys tomorrow for Shadowverse at 9 a.m. Have a great night, America, and other countries too.